Hey folks, this is the first in what I think will be a five part series on advice for certain age groups. So advice for uh, 25 year olds, 35, 45, 55, 65 year olds. So that, those age groups, if you don't hit exactly one of those, you know, uh, get the closest one. And um, I'm going to be doing, at least for the first several of them, I'm gonna be doing it as uh, advice for my self when I was 25. So I'm 57 now, so what advice was, would I give my 25 year old self is the title of this one. So um, what uh, I'm planning on doing is giving three to five uh, bullets, just the key ones, not here's the 75 things you need to know, but hey, core things that if you do these things right, you'll be in pretty good shape in my opinion. And again, I wish I could tell myself these. Um, also what's gonna be critical in these is for you, the viewer, to add your lessons to this. So I'm gonna start off with three to five, and then please, I'd like to see 200 comments on here on your life lessons from your experiences for yourself at this uh, particular age. Sound like fun? So the comments are critical to this. So, hey, this is Joe Kuhn of Lean Driven Reliability. So let's, uh, let's get going here. So this 25-year-old self, uh, and these are really not in order. It's hard to put these in order. Uh, spent some time on that, but uh, it, it didn't work out. Uh, okay, so number one, um, save for retirement in Roth IRAs and in your company's uh, 401ks. You know, um, in the 401k, a minimum get the company match, okay? So if they match 100% of 6%, a minimum put 6% in, then you're saving 12%. But do the Roth first, and if you have an opportunity to do Roth, do the Roth first, okay? Um, Roth is by far, at, at a young age, the best way to grow because everything grows tax-free, right? Um, then when you get a raise or a bonus, you know, push that, that 401k that, uh, after you're maxed on your, your Roth, push that 401k from 6% up to seven, up to eight, up to nine, trying for 25, okay? 25 is kind of what I, I wish I would have started off early. Um, I did a pretty good job at this, but I wish I would have done it a little bit earlier. So when you get a ba raise or bonus, you know, it's okay to go out to eat. It's okay to celebrate a little bit, but don't have that go towards, hey, I need a nicer car, okay? So keep, keep using those bonuses and raises to push that up. You know, invest 90% in low cost mutual funds with a growth focus, you know? Uh, you don't need bonds when you're 25. You got, you got a long time for the stock market to work its way out. Remember, the stock market makes two steps forward for every one step back. Except for the last like 12 years, it's been all forward, a uh, slight step back uh, uh, in 2020. Ignore the ups and downs in the market. If you don't wanna learn the market, just put, it, put the money in there and forget about it, okay? Let it grow, watch your percentages, uh, You know, let them grow up towards 25 and just forget about it, just forget about it. Um, if you're not gonna know the market. There's other things to do if you want to, um, but take no action during down market. So if the market goes down 50%, just keep on buying, just keep on buying. Uh, if you wanna take more action, <laughs> buy more stocks. But um, I'm, I'm assuming that uh, you may not wanna uh, spend your time being an expert in the market. So that's number one, save for retirement. I'm telling you folks, it's hard to understand, but uh, when you get to be you know, 45 or so, you're gonna start thinking about retirement and the time to start taking action is actually in your 20s. Okay, that was number one. Number two, find a career that the world needs, that you can get paid for and you love, okay? You know, it's still early and you may have a major in, in um, you know something from college or you may be a, a welder, or you may be a, a plumber, nurse, uh, engineer, whatever it is. Uh, if you don't love it, keep searching. And you know, the world needs your talent. And also in this field, think about where you can be in the best 5%, the best 5%. That means for every 20 people out there, you know, you're number one. So something that you can really get, get your head around, you really enjoy doing it. You really almost would do it for no money, but they're paying you. You're at the top of your game. You love what you're doing. You think about it, you know, on on the weekend. You think about it when you're on vacation a little bit because it's just it's your passion, your gift to the world. Uh, it's out there for everyone, I believe. You know, this also means taking risk. Okay, 
you know, to do something new. You know, I, I this this channel has a reliability slant to it in, in several of my videos, most of my videos. But, you know, one of the things I'm doing is I'm teaching reliability is a focus on waste and to see the waste first. Folks, before you take action, before you implement tools, that's different than what everybody else is doing, okay? So I'm taking a risk. I'm at risk of being ostracized in the community because I am almost teaching people to do the opposite of what other people are saying to do. So there is risk involved in doing that. So, but I love it. I love it at this point in my career. So, hey, number two is find a career the world needs, you love, and you can be at the top 5% in that field where you can get paid, okay? Uh, all those things are important. Number three, you know, do 10% more than is expected. So many people do the average. So many people do the minimum. Uh, I've had the, you know, a career of, of leadership and management. And I'm telling you, 90% um, of people do the minimum, do the average, you know, put in their time. If you want to have a great career and you want to earn, you know, in, in the, you know, the top 5% in your field, give 10% more. You know, and that's not always 10% more hours, but 10% more risk, you know, 10% 10, 10 more um, uh, innovativeness. Uh, you know, maybe you read on the side is an excellent example. Uh, get a mentor, get a guide, you know, somebody that's been there. Don't learn everything yourself. People wrote books. People make YouTube videos giving you pointers on how to, how to uh, accelerate your career. Pay attention to them pay attention to them. That's doing 10% more. Most people won't do that. They like watching gaming or something like that on their YouTube or something to be entertained with. Uh, you're, you be in the camp that learns from your YouTube, okay? And, and don't just burn time in front of the television set. How do you make that a learning opportunity? Same amount of time invested, but make it so you learn. Um, if you want to greatly accelerate your career, look to give 20% more than is expected. 20% more. I'm telling you to cut the time in half um, that you need to uh, for financial independence or even retire early. Uh, you know, I'm talking to Joe, 25 year old Joe here. You know, but it all it involves taking risk. Okay, you know, uh, involves taking risk in um, you know getting a mentor and listening to the mentor. Um, uh, even though it doesn't make sense to you at 25, listen to that mentor that's 57 years old, you say, hey, I'll, I'll take a risk, I'm gonna do this. Uh, failure accelerates your journey, folks. This is, this is, a lot of people don't realize this, and, and it's really difficult for engineers, is they wanna be right all the time. And they're not, not willing to take any action unless they've thoroughly thought it through, had all the, def, the data in the world, and then they still wait another six months and, <laughs> and get another opinion, and then they take action. Uh, so that they will be right all the time. You will have a very slow developing career, uh, very slow developing investments if you're not willing to take risk and you're not willing to fail, okay? It, it's that simple, you gotta fail. You, you need to accelerate how fast you fail, <laughs> how many times you fail, and learn from each one of those lessons. It's not just about failing, it's what did I learn from that. Number four, uh, no, oops, went a little too far know that things will not buy happiness. This is very important, folks. I wish I would have learned this much earlier in my life. You know, cars, boats, designer clothes, having $200 Apple earbuds versus having a $20 set of earbuds off Amazon. You know, <laughs> just chasing uh, happiness by having, hey, you got a good reliable car, but I just got a pay raise, I'm gonna buy an expensive car so everybody can see me driving the nicest car in the parking lot. Hey folks, ego, vanity, um, and thinking that things are gonna buy happiness is just wrong, you know? Experiences, relationships, that's where happiness is. Family, um, love, um, you, you, you know, it's okay to have a few nice things, but, um, you know, think them through. Um, you know, lifestyle creep, you know, Joe, when you're 25 here, lifestyle creep is a big deal. It's like, hey, I've got a raise, now I can buy a bigger house. Why do you need a bigger house? Because I can afford one, okay? Why do I need to keep working? It's because I got a bigger house. You know, the other day somebody said they had to keep working because they bought a brand new truck. <laughs> 
you know, that's that's not a very good reason to bought a new truck. So you have to work. I have to work. I have to keep putting in all this time in a job that I may not like. Um, but you know, you know, crazy. Live life always. Live life. In, when you're 25, live it. Don't don't just you know live like a miser for 40 years, and then you know you, you may not have that you know <laughs> that retirement life may not even occur. But live life, but also take the long view. You know, is that purchasing decision or that investment decision? What's it look like a year from now? Hey, I got a boat. I like fishing, but there's this thirty thousand dollar boat that I can I can afford. I can work it out. Is that a good decision five years from now? You know, we all know what the two best uh, days to own a boat are, the day you bought it and the day you sold it. Um, but make sure you're taking the long view and thinking through decisions. Some people I tell them, don't make, it, don't make a purchasing decision uh, in the moment, wait at least seven days and talk it over with somebody. Some people actually call me. They, they, they say, I'm gonna call Joe and explain to me why you need to make this $1,000 purchase, this $2,000 purchase. And when you have to explain it to somebody, sometimes that's awful or embarrassing. And it comes down to, I just want it. <laughs> and I just want it, uh, boy, it is not a very good reason because I'm telling you, 99% of those things that I just want, um, 30 days from now, you'll, you, you'll regret it. And, and you know, I am really passionate about cars because it's, it's such a big uh, investment, investment. It's such a big liability you're buying and it, it never makes you happy. Um, you know, that new car smell wears out really quick and it's just transportation, right? So live your life, okay? I'm not saying be a miser at all. I, I, I did, you know, I, I lived my life, you know, and, and I greatly enjoyed my career and greatly enjoyed my, my 32 years of working. No regrets, would do it exactly the same way. Um, but it was time to go for me. So, um, you know, the last one, this is number five, and I'll bet I'm gonna throw you for a loop on this one. Uh, the last one, <laughs> Get married and stay married. You know, uh, I love marriage. It's a very important part of my life. Uh, you know, get a lot of joy out of marriage and, and um, my kids. Uh, there's frustrating days too. Uh, but the kids and love and relationships, the family, I just absolutely love that. But folks, um, you know, uh, ending a marriage uh, because of neglect and you're, or you're not on the same journey together, you've got all these other interests and your wife's got all these other interests and you divide apart. Um, that is catastrophic from a financial point of view, um, as well as emotional and relationship wise. So financially it's, it is just as devastating. So, uh, make sure you're investing uh, in your relationship. You know, remember I said do 10% more and 20% more that includes your marriage. Okay. So getting married and staying married is, I'm telling you, great. You could do these other four things just perfect. And then you get a divorce. At, 45 years old, you just you just cut everything in half and, and you're not gonna have financial independence retire early, it's just not gonna happen. So, hey, those are my five um, that if you can knock out Joe, <laughs> uh, you'll be doing quite well. And please, folks, if you hung in this far, give me a bunch of comments on here so everybody can learn from your top lessons about being 25.